I kind of talked about that in the context of uh, a recent episode of our podcast, Ear Biscuits, where Link and I both kind of shared our long backstory and specifically kind of growing up as evangelical Christians and then kind of transitioning out of that as we, like over the past decade and a half or so. And so that's very much my wife's background as well. Um, and so I think that the second wind kind of came when uh, there was this, v- there was a pretty long period of time in this, what we kind of call the deconstruction process when we were kind of like, basically taking the orienting principle of our entire lives and just sort of saying, we don't believe this anymore. Um, We thought that the only reason, this is an oversimplification, but we thought that the main reason that we were married and had a good marriage and had a hopeful marriage was just based on this particular worldview that we had, right? And then when you kind of abandon that worldview, then you're like, well, what do we have now? We just have like love, (laughs) you know? Uh, And I think that there was sort of a rediscovery of each other in that process when we uh, realized that like, oh yeah, this is um, the, obviously there is a commitment involved, but it isn't something that like, oh, you're only staying married because you fear God's judgment or something like that. Mm -hmm. No, you're, you're actually compelled to stay together because you keep discovering new things about one another besides just the sexual tricks. Um, And so I think that, uh, and that doesn't always happen because I think in a a lot of deconstructions and we know this from many stories that we've heard and and stories that people have even shared over the past couple of weeks. It's like a lot of times people don't come along for that. They're like, Mm -hmm. no, that's not. And it isn't like I was like, hey, you got to do this. It was very much just like, here, here's what's happening to me. And then Jesse has her very, her own particular story and reasons that are very different than mine that where she got to where she's at. Um, But I think it was kind of like being in a club together and feeling like your association with this person is kind of based on your membership in this club. And then you both sort of leave the club and then rediscover each other. And we're like, oh, actually no, because we love each other. Um, So I think that, yeah, the past few years, I think, have been the best years of our marriage, for sure. Do you feel like it was was incredibly hard to... Because were you the first person to kind of express doubts or kind of walk through that door, if we call it that? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, for sure. What um, what was kind of... How long did you... If you're comfortable talking about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how long did you kind of have to think about it? And what was like the moment where you, where you were like, okay, this is it? I knew that it was going to be a very... Um, very sensitive subject, but I didn't wait too long. Um, I mean, I, I, I have a friend who basically completely deconstructed before he ever let his wife know anything because he was so frightened at what it might do, you know, um, which I totally get that and, and relate to that. But for me, it was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna bring something up, which is something that I actually was thinking about six months ago. I'm actually already in a different place now, but maybe I should, before I get too far along in this process, maybe I should just say, what do you think about this? Um, And virtually every time that I would ask a difficult question, which, you know, she was, she's very intelligent and intelligent enough to know, oh, I see where this is going. And so basically it would always result in her like kind of breaking down okay and crying but not she wasn't mad and she wasn't she didn't judge me and she might push back a little bit but we would just kind of continue to talk about things and then um after a while i think she would kind of be like okay i I, i'm kind of in this i'm in the same place on this particular thing and it kind of just slowly unfolded and then after a while she was just at that point once she had sort of like lost the fear of being introspective about her faith uh, um in the in the way that i was she took her own path and kind of had her own process because I, w- I was gonna say like i i can't imagine how scary that would be not only because there are the stories of it not panning out or yeah. working out but i've <laughs> 
<laughs> I've had to kind of calm myself down because I think after w listening to both of your podcasts talking about everything you went through mm -hmm. and then seeing some of the reactions uh, in general, very positive, but I imagine yeah. the ones that stand out are people saying things like disappointed or th those yeah. things that you pre-plan for and then you see yeah, it yeah, and yeah. it sucks. Like yeah. I, that's, it's not to minimize anything else. I, I'm sure it's like the closest thing like a straight white guy can feel towards like a coming out of some sort, yeah. you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely started to realize I was able to empathize with, you know, people who came out of a, a sexual closet sure. because it was a, it was a religious closet and it was, okay, we're, we're, we're breaking this news. This has been something that's been uh, a part of who I am for years, but I, I've resisted the urge to talk about it or I haven't, it, there's never seems to be the right time to talk about it. And again, you're, it's, it's different in that it wasn't, it was I, I well I don't know how different it was but it was a it was a process you know over many years and it wasn't just me realizing oh I'm gay this is my this is a part of who I am it's more of my my worldview is morphing it's evolving mm -hmm. it's you know so but it so it it is different but at the moment that you do decide to share it and it's you're revealing a lot yeah I'm like okay, now everyone has to have their take on it. And even the people who are, they think they're being helpful or caring, um, but they just don't see how there's something baked into their response that is um, even hurtful. You know, I started to think about people's coming out stories and, and starting to relate at least a little bit and I mean, it's just one of the many positive ripple effects of sharing our stories was just being able to empathize more with other people, even if it's a totally different story about something totally different to say, okay, you've, you, especially on the internet, you put yourself out there and I, you know, I, yeah, it's like, I, I didn't know it was going to feel like that. Are you I, talking I guess, about specifically with family or your your wife and your family and friends or no, after I'm, this video? No, I'm talking about with, yeah, I'm talking about the public reaction. Mm. I mean, it, with Christy and with the kids, it was something that we were having ongoing conversations over the, you know, over the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so it was fans, strangers, people who care about the issues but don't know us and have never... Yeah. consumed any of our content now coming out of their woodwork to give their hot take on on what we shared was something that i i guess we anticipated that happening but I, yeah. yeah you know i don't know how much you can pr really prepare for it yeah i i tried to well i think when i sort of told my story i was telling it in a way um that I would have wanted to have heard it 10 years ago as myself, right? Like something that would have made sense to me 10 years ago. And so I tried to, because we, we you know, being in that community, uh, we've had friends deconstruct and we actually t talk a little bit about this on, on, on our podcast with one of our good friends. Um, who he basically sort of, sort of straying from a very, traditional faith and we try to sort of get to the bottom of it and figure out well, what 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 did he do wrong not does he have any good points it was more like what's wrong with him mm -hmm. and his process and his motivations that led him to this place and because i knew that that was what was going to happen with us i was very careful to say some things that i knew would be common accusations right i was very clear to say that okay I know what people are going to think. They're going to think that you guys moved to Los Angeles and you lost your faith. Big, yeah, big surprise. Happens all the time. So tried to be very clear about the fact that this process had started and almost completely finished when I was in North Carolina. Still completely embedded in a Christian community. Still leading a Bible study at my church. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and still the deconstruction had basically happened. 
So it kind of made that clear. But that it d- doesn't really matter because we're still getting lots of people saying that. And so you kind of just like, you know, I think a lot of a lot of the comments, and I remember this feeling this way, or kind of now looking back in retrospect to the way that we treated people who sort of deconstructed or left the faith. What we had to say to them was a lot more about our own fear and our own insecurity. Um, in fact, I haven't even told you this story, but we, we, we've got a good friend who, who had sort of a public deconstruction and somebody wrote one of these sort of like Christian hit pieces on, on him to kind of basically try to find where he went wrong and what was wrong with his motivations and his process and his heart that led him to this place. And then after the article came out, he got a direct message from the dude who wrote the article. who was basically like, Hey man, I'm actually a big fan of yours and I don't believe this anymore either. What? But wow. he, he wrote he wrote the hit piece. <laughs> yes, and so it, it, it's and, and and you know what? That, it's not that surprising is... at all. It's not surprising at all because in so many of the critical sort of dismissive and judgmental responses that I see, I can actually see my former self in those struggling and trying to talk to myself to try to justify where I'm at. You know, and I think that my my wife made a really good point when we were talking about this. She was like, you know, if something is true, does it really need to be defended with a passion and with an intensity? Um, Do you need to make sure, oh, we got to make, we got to teach our kids to be ready for all this, this, and this, and this. We got to prepare everybody. It's like, if something is true, it should be able to withstand, you know, investigation and inquiry, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that, um, I think a lot of people are just kind of speaking out of their own fears and insecurities. And, but I totally get it because that's- That's where we were. That's where we were. And that's where I continue to be as a, as a human, right? I want to justify myself now and where I'm at now. I want to defend the things that I think now and a lot of that comes from my own fears and insecurities. You know, you don't the, you don't get rid of that. But the stakes associated with what we believe now is not the same as what it was then. You know, yeah. if if the stakes are eternal salvation or damnation, um, and, and then you think about okay, we got to protect our kids, and you know, I, I get that because we were in that place, and it, so it, there is a level of um, intensity that I aspire to shed now. Um, well, but, I don't have the do ability I, to be that intense about what I believe now. Because right, if you're like, it's, well, it's, I'm not going to die on the hill defined. of, because I don't, it's not I, I'm no longer certain about things about which I don't think I can be certain about. It, well, I feel like you know? part of the reason maybe people had such a, in addition to obviously like the, the kids watch you angle, right? That, 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 I saw that yeah. getting thrown yeah, around, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. was it's it's such a, a core thing for them and you're such reasonable guys i even i went through one of the pieces that was kind of like going after uh you and i use that kind of loosely but it was almost like <laughs> the point of the article was we need to get better at uh f- like uh debating yeah. uh, these points and like and it was and it was right. so weird Red, to, Red it was Link are too far gone it was, but but it was very others, political and yeah. like it was so strange to me yeah, yeah and i and i we understand that because we were intimately involved in that side of it and um i think we we have regrets associated with that but it it still hurts when you say when you share this is who i am and then the response is this is where you're wrong you know, and I think that's where I start to, I start to relate to people who make the brave move to come out of the closet. Is that they're saying this is who I am, and they do get the response a lot. That's like, this is no, this is a choice you made, or this is a you know, and I, I feel for those people more than ever now. And so that's what I was trying to say earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also because I think that's why that's the emotional component, you know. I shared who I was, but then now I'm dealing with the criticism of, well, you just you, you just did it wrong. If you would have understood or or lived certain things, or if you didn't have a certain neurosis, like if if you didn't have the anxiety you have, or um, this is something you put on yourself, and it's 
that's not what God wants for or you. Or you don't understand grace or whatever. You don't understand yeah. grace. I think, you know, and I think I think those things are true to a certain extent that like, yeah, th- this, this is part of who I am, but it, um, but it hurt. It, it just hurts when you're sharing who you are, and then people pick a, pick it apart like it's separate from you. When you said you said a moment ago there were regrets with something, what, what were you saying? Um, what did I say? <laughs> I of being judgmental of being oh, you mean of you being, in the past. yeah of uh. of being. You know, I think being on the receiving end. I think we were on the giving end for a long time of just being able to put people in a in in a box to well, apply label to and specific people, but specifically to we, render judgment when you uh and listen everybody has their own biases and everyone everyone basically thinks that they're right otherwise i mean you hopefully everyone is sort of as close to the truth that they think they are like you know it, but there's an interesting sort of there's this interesting thing that happens when you subscribe to a worldview which says that you have the truth like you have the preeminent truth that comes from the creator of the universe and you have a special relationship with the creator of the universe and a lot of other people don't even if you're a loving person because there's plenty of people who are incredibly loving who are in the christian community but if you subscribe to that worldview you can't help but delegitimize so many other experiences that people have like you can't help but delegitimize if if you're if you're the kind of Christian who subscribes to the idea that the Bible clearly teaches that it's wrong and sinful to be gay, well, you can't believe that the love between two men or two women is as legitimate as the love that you have, right? You can't you can say things like love the love the sinner, hate the sin, which is really one of the most backhanded. <laughs> it's just so insulting when you really think about it. But you're basically delegitimizing people's humanity, um, and it's and I think that it's a pattern. It's a really interesting thing because you know one of the things that Link talked about in his story was how specifically his view on LGBTQ issues was something that kind of like pushed him forward in his decision. And a lot of people criticized him for that in some of these articles that are being written, saying things like, "Well." it's clear that it wasn't really intellectual. It was mostly because he just, an emotion, he has an emotional attachment to this idea that he doesn't want to judge gay people. And I'm like, well, isn't that a good motivation? <laughs> you know, the intellectual and emotional, you can, you can try to parse those things, but I find it really interesting that some people are making that argument. And one thing I saw said, it's too late for Rhett and Link, mostly because of this LGBT thing. Once they've gone there, wow. it's too late for them. And I'm like, can't you see that you guys have lost this argument? History is going to leave you behind. You know, you can hold out, you can get into your little crevice and hold out as long as you want to, but in the same way, that we had to argue about, you know, we had to convince the church that uh, slavery was wrong. <laughs> we had to convince the church that interracial marriage was okay. Now we're having to convince the church that it's okay to be gay. And they're going. You keep... don't mean we? I don't. I don't think <laughs> me, meaning me you and know, you. I'm. I'm saying yes. I get you. The culture. Yeah. You know. And so I. I, I just think it's. I don't know. It's I get fired up. To t- <laughs> I get fired up talking about it, and you know, and I get more fired up here than I would on our podcast because I'm trying to keep our podcast a little bit <laughs> even more friendly and inviting place. <laughs> but it's you know these are, these are the things that I've been thinking since yeah. since the uh, all the, the the hit pieces have come out. When you showed the picture of us um, at the YouTube live event, yeah, and it was the first time we all got together. Yeah. I was. You know, I said we felt like outsiders because we weren't we weren't connecting with the community in the way that a lot of creators were. Um, I also felt, I think we we sensed that we were misfits because we were so um, fundamental. And I think that if you had an interaction with us, okay. and I'm, you know what, maybe maybe what maybe you remember, but I had this thought that like people can tell that we're different and 
we would usually say that in a good way. It's like people can tell that we're different, and that's us being a witness for us having a relationship with Jesus, okay? But it was also this, people can tell that we're different because we're we're uptight. I think we're judgmental, you know? And once we started, you know, we were working out of this little basement studio uh, and just putting stuff on the internet. And once we started to actually, our world got bigger when we started to meet other creators. Um, I remember when we met Michael Buckley the first time, he gave me a hug. And I remember thinking, I th- this is the first openly gay person I've ever hugged. Oh, and wow. I yeah. don't know what, I know what I'm supposed to believe about this guy that I'm hugging, but this, but, and it was a crisis moment hmm. for me because I was like, this doesn't feel right. For, for me, and let me clarify, it didn't feel right for, for me to, to render judgment of him because what I wanted to do was hug him back and actually mean it. But mm-hmm. there was, I was, I had been, the belief that I was ingrained with didn't allow me to, uh, to sincerely hug the guy. And I was, it was upsetting. Yeah, that must've been really hard. And it was, and I would hate to think that he felt that, that he felt the judgment that, you know, I, I think if that I was supposed to to render. And and again, as I'm as I'm sharing this story, I start I, I started to become super aware of anyone listening who um uh, might be saying, you know what, I I have a relationship with God. It's different than what you said. I never believe those things. I know there are people who yeah. believe there are Christians who believe all, you know, they're all on the spectrum, right? Um, they could be gay affirming. They could be, so we're not saying that just because you're a Christian that you that you're that you can't right. Not a broad actually brush. love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I'm speaking for me. We're like, kind of talking I, about the world that we came from, the, right. the specific flavor of Christianity. Yeah. Um, but it was a it was a powerful <clears throat> moment, you know. And I hope he hears this because I've never told him that like that moment of me hugging him was uh it was a big milestone in me coming to grips with this and i think being involved in youtube and becoming more part of the community and my world expanding it people think that it's that oh they moved to la and they got liberal you know they gave up their faith you know i mean well you could also blame it on youtube because many years before it's like i mean in a very good way, it it expanded. You know the the people in this we, we didn't we didn't rub shoulders with anybody like in that before that picture. You know it, we were in our own little microcosm. Yeah, it sounds like and we like felt this. like we had it all figured out. And I took extreme comfort, and I think with the way that I worked, I really needed the comfort of knowing that okay, I'm right. I'm right. If you know, I'm safe because I'm right. It's tethered you. Yeah. Yeah. And it made it scary to start to say, okay, I'm am I I'm gonna let go of this. Um but it was, you know, so I don't I I understand I understand why I was there, but I'm also grateful that I'm where I'm at now. Hmm. And um People are coming out of the woodwork that knew us before, and it's news to them. So it's, are you are you okay, Christy? Are you okay? Are the kids okay? It's like because, you know, it's it's a, it's a their their viewpoint is that we've lost something. We've lost a, a specific type of faith. Okay, a specific strain of faith. But my response is, yeah, we're we we're very much okay. This didn't happen yesterday. It happened over a long period of time. We didn't share it on the heels of coming to grips with it. One, but two, um, I've gained a lot. You mm-hmm. know, um, I've gained the ability to to love myself and other people a lot more than I ever have, 
And that's something that's something I'm grateful for. 